Great. Thank you. Welcome, David. So great to see you again. I was wondering if you could tell me what you guys are currently investing in at Blumberg Capital. Sure. We are, as ever, specialists in early stage uh, technology investing. As you know, we have a large fintech portfolio. About a third of the portfolio is fintech. Um, I think AI seems to dominate uh, these days, and AI is never far afield from big data. So the two of those go together. So we're looking at companies that are both marketplaces for data, aggregating all kinds, synthesizing it into something new and of more value, uh, and also um, facilitating uh, data from others uh, through algorithmic manipulation, um, using AI as a service. And so we see both, where companies are either providing a service to other companies or actually aggregating and manipulating the data themselves. Right. And so tell me, what do you think personally um, are the main pain points at the moment as far as credit goes? Well, it's, there's so many different issues. Yeah. On the one hand, we have a very low interest rate environment. Now, that hurts the savers. And in, in Europe, it's actually gone, and in Asia, it's gone to negative right. interest rates. So that's a very strange situation. I don't think that can last long, although right. there's not a lot pushing it up. In fact, the ECB recently lowered rates and did more stimulus uh, right. again. <coughs> in the US, we've had a significant change, which I would say is not a burden. It's actually been a, a bonus to the consumer in that the regulatory burden has lightened significantly under this administration compared to the past. Okay. So that has allowed non-bank banks to facilitate new kinds of lending, new opportunities, and it's facilitated the large banks to start to tiptoe back into the market um, in certain areas that they were being wrapped on the knuckles for previously. Okay, so right. I tend to believe, we, Bloomberg Capital tends to believe that, that more choice is better for yes. consumers so that we like a light regulatory touch, whereas some of the folks prefer a much heavier hand. Yeah. Um, so other bottlenecks are this millennial generation, which is the largest working generation uh, between 23 and 38 is the largest group of the population right now. Wow. And they are in the market, but surprisingly, they're less entrepreneurial than older folks. And I think it's because they were a bit shell-shocked by the 2008 recession. And they have high student loan debts, often. And so they're just probably, you know, they're not even buying houses at the rate that we did. So, and the family formation is lower. So <clears throat> there's some fear in their financial futures. Um, so better planning tools uh, can start to help them. Um, automatic uh, deductions for savings, um, helping them make cash offers on houses, allowing them to be very good payers. Um, one of our portfolio companies called Earn Up helps you never miss, uh, never miss an, uh, a mortgage payment. And it, offers, it optimizes how you pay so that you end up spending less on the total interest over time and shortening your mortgage. Um, and these one are, of the co-founders. Um, a while back. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nadim and uh, yeah. Matthew. Nadim, they're they're yeah. great. Yeah. So um, the basic issue is that you asked what are the current bottlenecks, and that there are a number, but I would say that AI and a lighter regulation and low interest rates are sort of coming somewhat to the rescue right. on three different fronts to make it a little bit easier for the average consumer right. to manage through uh, difficult times. Right. Not that they're so difficult, but <laughs> make things easier. And um, what, how do you see personally the future or how you, would you like to see it um, coming as far as credit goes? When you ask about credit, traditionally people have been graded on what we call the traditional FICO scores. Mm -hmm. And that is, to my mind, thankfully losing its monopoly. Right. That non-bank lenders especially um, are using other kinds of data. In, in the developing world, where people are mostly unbanked or underbanked decisively, um, we have a company called Lendo, which gathers all kinds of interesting data from social media sites and other various um, points of data collection. And they're able to sell that to banks and other lenders to help people obtain credit who don't have the traditional credit score. Um, we've just invested in a fascinating company in the um, real estate tech uh, business called Easy Knock, uh, headquartered in New York. And they allow somebody who has a low credit score but um, owns their own home and wants some equity out of it to change from an owner to a renter but stay in their own home. Right. That's so it gives flexibility. It reduces your mortgage payment generally to a lower 
rental payment, but you stay where you've always wanted to stay as long as you want. And at any time, you can then purchase that home back. Or if you decide that you want to move, you sell it into the market and we share the proceeds. So it gives you flexibility, and yet you get to pull the trigger to buy back or to sell just as if it was your, your home and you were an owner. Very so cool. there's a nice flexibility there. So I think that's an example of what we're seeing is unbundling of financial products mm. um, combined with smart algorithms and AI to facilitate this, all done on mobile, mm. so that one can have access to these new financial products that were previously available to large corporations. For example, Easy Knock does essentially sale leaseback for residential properties, whereas it was always available for commercial properties. And also um, what was available for wealthy families is now available for a broader base uh, of consumers because, again, the cost through technology has been reduced. That's fantastic. Oh, very hopeful. And I was wondering if you could have a few words about crypto lending because that's uh, interesting to me that that's starting to hit the market now too. Yes. Um, we've not invested in that area yet, but we started to look at it. And more than crypto lending, what we're starting to see is large businesses starting to actually use uh, blockchain technology for the rails to start to reduce the time, reduce the cost, and ensure, frankly, the verifiability of counterparty uh, and, and make it non-repudiable uh, and so on. So that's more where we've seen opportunities. Um, and it's good because I remember in 2015, I believe, none of the top 10 um, blockchain deals had large corporate investors in them. By 2016, and maybe my years are off, all of the top 10 uh, blockchain deals had large yeah. corporate investors. In. So we're starting to see that the large corporations are starting to take it seriously, and that will bring a degree of credibility, yeah. um, a, degree of, a degree of volume, and the um, enterprise standard um, requirements of, for example, transactions per second that are holding back uh, this business in, in, in other realms. So I think where often we see consumer-led um, innovation in this case, at least on the blockchain side, while the crypto trading has been a lot consumer-led, in the infrastructure, it's going to be led by the bigger companies. Yeah. And when they start operating in consortium that are giving trust among one another, that will be a very good icebreaker Fantastic. to start the market flowing. Fantastic. Thank you again for coming, and I think the panel will be fantastic. I'm looking forward. Thank you for the great opportunity you always provide uh, here. Thanks. and.